Hi folks, thanks for stopping in today. Uh, first of all, I thank everyone for how well the channel is going. We're at over 100 subscribers now, so that's really cool. It's growing a lot faster than I thought. So if you haven't subscribed, please do, and thanks to everyone that has. Uh, I really enjoy your comments also. So thanks for watching. Today we want to talk about gas rings on a revolver. Now usually if you say gas rings, what people think you're talking about Something like the gas rings we see on the bell of this AR-15 bolt, where they're a driving force in the system. Or maybe the piston rings in an internal combustion engine, where again, it's a driving force. And so when you start talking about a gas ring and a revolver, people look at you funny. Because, well, you're driving the revolver. The revolver is not a self-loader. It is just a repeater. You are the mechanical force driving the revolver. So what is a gas ring on a revolver? Well, it's a protection mechanism. If we look at this Colt Python cylinder here that I have removed from the Python, if we look here, it's a little lump of metal coming off the cylinder face. What purpose does that serve? Because that's the gas ring. Because if you think about it, that makes the manufacturing more complex. This would be a lot easier if this was all smooth and you didn't have this extra bit of metal here. You could get more cylinders per bar of steel because you wouldn't have this extra eighth of an inch or so sticking off the front. You would have less manufacturing process involved because you wouldn't have to cut around this to make that raised portion. So why would you do something like that? Well, I have a little drawing to explain it. The reason for the gas ring is the cylinder gap. So you have the barrel and you have the chamber in the cylinder. And between them, you have a gap, a small gap. It's, I don't know, thousandths of an inch. I forget exactly what it measures on the on the python. I think about I'm not even gonna lie to you, but it's a it's a small gap in there. When you fire the bullet passes of course across the gap and you have hot gas blowing down. Blowing up too. It's blowing out the sides. Uh, anyone that's ever gotten there thumb or fingers too far forward on a revolver knows that there is hot gas blowing out the side. Depending on what it is, it can pretty seriously hurt you even. But it can also hurt the revolver. Uh, you, particularly with really high pressure magnums, can end up having gas cutting uh, even on the top strap of the revolver. Uh, and it applies a lot of fouling. You have this gas coming out with soot, carbon, and if you have the cylinder attaching to the cylinder pin, the yoke or crane, however you want to call it, directly right here in line with the cylinder gap, you run two risks. One is that you can end up with gas cutting on your cylinder pin, on your axle that the revolver is revolving on or you end up with deposits of carbon and soot that will then gum up the works here. It can make it hard for that cylinder to rotate smoothly. It can make it hard to cock the revolver. If it's a double action revolver like the Python is, it can make it a very stiff trigger to where you're overcoming that resistance of all that grit, all that debris that's building up there on your axle, on your cylinder pin. And so the gas ring, what it's doing is basically causing this necessary gap in both places. I mean, you have to have a seam between your cylinder and your, your cylinder pin, your ejector rod. You have to have a seam there because the cylinder needs to rotate on that axle. If it can't revolve, it's, it's not a very good revolver. So you have to have a seam 
there, you have to have a seam between your chambers and the barrel. And so all the gas ring is doing is creating a zigzag to where as this hot gas blows out, it's deflected away, out the sides, forward, any which way that it needs to be so that it is not getting down to your cylinder pin. So you're not getting the damage to it and you're not getting the, um, the buildup of, of carbon, the buildup of soot there to, to cause any binding. So if we grab the rest of the python here, let's take a look and see how this works. So we've got the revolver mostly assembled and then the cylinder disassembled. And we see here the end of the barrel, the forcing cone, sticking out the back of the frame there. Now if I place the cylinder in here, obviously I'm just holding this together as best I can, but you have that gap, and this is really exaggerated right now, but that's good so you can see it. You have that huge gap there where the gas comes out. It normally wouldn't be that big. And then you have your gas ring in misalignment with that to where they're not set up linearly. And instead, it's acting as an interruption so that the gas can't get down to the axle here that it needs to rotate on. So that keeps this area much cleaner and prevents any damage happening to it. It's a pretty simple concept. It's a pretty simple problem and the solution is really simple. It's just a raised bit of metal on the front of the cylinder. In some designs, it's set up differently. It might be a separate piece. It might be um, more associated with the, um, with the crane set up in here to where it's kind of deflecting. But however it's set up, that's what the problem is and that's the problem being solved is it's just a way of simply deflecting gas from the cylinder gap to guard the mechanical functions of the, the revolving of the cylinder. That's all there is to it. Uh, it might be better to call it a gas deflector or something. I mean, a gas ring has such a, a connotation of a driving force and that's not what it is, but, but it's typically called a gas ring and that's its purpose, that's what it does, very simple. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe.